All right, hi students. Uh, this is part two of how to make a ceramic box. Uh, for this demonstration, I am assuming that you have your slab um, all cut out. Um, right now I'm showing you the sides. I also have the base and the lid. Uh, I'm just keeping them wrapped up for the moment. Uh, the tools you are gonna need are gonna be your you know, Bart Simpson head looking tool. Um, you're also probably going to want um, a tool that you can cut with. You're definitely going to need that. Um, I like this one quite a bit for what we're going to be doing. Um, if you're in the classroom, you can also borrow one of these settling knives. Um, these are pretty sharp and they are great for this step of the process. All right, so I've got two of you here because I want you guys to be able to see it from uh, the side as well. I don't think it's going to be great. Um, as far as the light, but we're going to just do what we can. All right, so I've got my slabs and I want to connect them. Um, of course, I could just join them like this, uh, but that's not going to be quite as strong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these edges on a 45 degree angle. Um, you're going to do this however it makes sense for you. If you want to sort of angle it here or if you want to stand it up. Um, and that's going to depend in large part on what the style is of your box, how large your pieces are, and what you're comfortable with. And you're just going to do the best you can. Uh, if it's not exact, it's not going to be the end of the world. You just want to get a little bit of a bevel here. Think about how picture frames connect, if you've ever noticed that. All right, these are all the same size, so I don't need to worry about um, which sides I'm cutting. I'm going to cut all of the long sides. And I'm wanting about a 45 degree angle. I know I'm giving you a lot of math references lately, um, but I think you can all handle it. Uh, we're going to do this all around. I'm not going to make you watch me do it on all of them, I promise. All right. So, but I definitely would at least get the two that you are working on. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier to cut both sides uh, before you have any of your sides attached. All right. So I can kind of set these ones off to the side for a moment. Uh, I'm going to be thinking about these two. So with a 45 degree angle, we have a little bit more surface area for those guys to connect and kind of see what feels best. You again are going to rough up your clay just like you did for attaching your coils. And that's with that spiky one. Um, make sure when you start this that your slabs are fairly sturdy. You do not want them to be floppy when you are putting your box together. You also do not want them to be so dry that they're kind of chalky. We call that bone dry. We want this sweet spot um, that potters refer to as leather hard. All right. We've got our scratch, and now we're going to give that a little spritz. Before we attach it, uh, make sure that you're working on a board or on a piece of canvas on the tabletop. We do not want to be cutting directly on the tables, whether you're at school or at home. All right, there might be a tiny little seam uh, where it's not sealed on one of these pieces. Do not worry about it. We can fill that in later with a coil. Um, if it's too bad. But what I'm going to do, as you can see here, those are pretty close. I'm going to smooth that a little bit with my fingers. And if I want a really sharp edge, again, I can put a teeny tiny coil in there um, to make it pretty, pretty much perfect. All right, so we've got that join. All right, so I'm going to repeat that here 
with these pieces and then adding the other pieces to this section. We want to make these as close to a 90 degree angle as possible, um, if that's what we're going for. Uh, for this example, of course, I'm using a four sided box. You may have decided to do a triangle um, or even something circular. All right, let me skip ahead for you guys so you don't have to watch the whole box construction. All right, I'm going to jump back in here to show you guys. Uh, sometimes you might get something weird where these are not quite lining up right. Something's a little bit taller. Um, so it looks like this piece is not quite even. So I might go ahead and trim that down a little bit. If you guys can quite see it from both sides. It's a little awkward because it's not my ideal spot. All right, I'm going to check that again. All right, now it's lining up a little bit better. So now I am ready to join all of these. This one might be, I didn't spray my computer. This one is maybe a little bit trickier feeling just because you're doing two at once and it's a little harder to get on the inside. I'm just smoothing this seam closest to me with my thumb. I can smooth it with my tool as well. Your tools are your friends, especially if you have long fingernails. Um, these let you kind of get in there where you might not be able to otherwise. All right, smishing these together, smoothing that seam. All right, so on the inside, which you guys probably can't see very well in the video, um, I've got a little bit, this side is great. Um, but one of them, I cut the angle like a little bit too steep and it might need a little coil on the inside. I'm just gonna use one of these little scrappies to sort of fill in some space there. Gonna add a little water because I need this to get a little bit smushy. I'm sorry, that's hard to see. If this happens to you in class, I will absolutely show you it in real life. All right, another little piece I'm gonna attach. Um, so notice I didn't scratch and attach because what I had there on the inside was already scratched. And then I'm adding clay that I'm making so wet, it's not really going to matter. That wet clay is going to kind of act like cement to hold that piece together. All right, so now I have this beautiful, symmetrical, even box, and I can add this to the base. Oh, the wrong piece. All right, so hopefully I have done my math correctly and this is gonna fit on top. It seems a little small. Um, if that happens to you and your math was a little off, don't worry. You can get another piece of slab, put this little guy on the top. I'm trying to save a little bit more space in case I need that for anything. And now I'm gonna just cut around it. Um, if you come up on a problem like that, you just have to figure out a creative solution. Art is a fantastic way 
to become a good problem solver. This is going to apply, problem solving skills are going to apply to all of your life, not just art. If you trim it a little too close, just roll with it. All right, so now I have a piece that hopefully should fit better. It's a good thing we saved our scraps. Um, otherwise, we would need to be rolling out another slab of clay for this, and that just might feel like a lot. All right, we're gonna scratch and attach on here. I'm going to scratch up the bottom as well. Remember, I don't need a lot of water, just a little gentle spritz is all we need. All right, in an ideal world, this would be totally symmetrical. So we made this custom, which is also fine. All right, so scratch and attach has got that connected, but I'm still going to seal up that seam by smoothing out the clay. Also do this with your tool, make it really smooth. If you want to, you can kind of do a little undercut with that base as well, if that works better with your aesthetic. All right, and then this is getting a little bit soft, so I'm probably gonna leave this alone, let it dry a little more. Um, on the inside, that is a little hard to see. I'm gonna grab you guys another light. So you can... All right, so on the inside, I've got a little bit of uh, rough clay on the base from when I did my scratch and attach. We are gonna just go in there with a tool. We can smooth that out as well as seal that connecting seam from the inside. All right, and then voila, you've got your box. Make any kind of other smoothing adjustments that you need to, like I may want to smooth out the bottom. I might want to trim some of this in a little bit. So it sort of has the illusion of lifting off from the table just a touch. All right, I'm going to let this dry a little bit and I'm going to work on my lid. All right, I may want to check if that fits. I'm probably going to go ahead and like create a new lid, um, but I do want to show you how to um, add an inside piece before I let you go. All right, so it's nice to have a little um, lip on the inside, uh, for example, this box um, has a little square on the inside of the lid, and that's to keep it from falling off, right? It's not going to just slide off the top. If I don't have something there, um, probably just going to fall. All right, so this is another great use for your scraps. Uh, you are going to want to scratch and attach it, but I'm going to make sure that I have the size that I need first. I'm going to allow on the outside, enough room for that slab. So this is going on the interior of the box. All 
You can also use a coil. That's fine. You don't have to cut these little strips. Um, you don't want everything to be about the same size. Um, but that's the idea is you just get these where you need them. Figure out what size they are going to be. Um, you can probably math that as well. I usually don't. I just kind of wing it. All right, so I figured out these sizes. Um, so now I can go ahead and scratch and attach get that together uh, and then work on something for the knob. So you can think about if you want like a little round thing there, like this has a little egg shape. Um, other lids might have um, more of a little thumb hold. It can be a little bulbous knob um, or you could even have something that's like a hefty handle that you can really pick up. So that's going to be an aesthetic choice, whatever is working with your design. All right, and then once you've got that design, of course, you're going to scratch and attach and get that on the top. All right, so I went ahead and made a lid that is actually the right size for the top of my box and added the inside piece. Um, this is starting to get fairly dry, but I can still add a knob on the top if I want to. So I'm gonna get some softer clay and just roll up a little ball. because I'm gonna do a little knob on the top. Um, maybe another egg. I'm into this like Easter theme at the moment. Think about what size you want it to be. You probably want it large enough to hold. Um, if your box is small, you don't have to depend on people picking it up from the knob. They can pick it up from the edges, um, like this one. You can pick it up from the egg, but you can also pick it up from the sides. Uh, but think about visually, how do you want that to look? How much space do you want it to take up on the top? And then once I formed my knob or my, I'm doing a little egg again. Um, I'm gonna, of course, scratch and attach. Um, since I constructed this um, today, I am gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Um, even though I'm done, I'm still gonna wrap it up because I want this to dry very slowly um, so that all these pieces can dry together. Especially I have pieces that are like fairly um, stiff and then I add some softer clay along those seams. I want to make sure that nothing cracks while it's drying. And the best way to do that is to um, ensure that it dries out very slowly. Uh, so I'm probably going to wrap it in at least one plastic bag, perhaps two, um, to really slow that process. All right, I think that's a nice little, little egg for the top. Of course, scratch and attach, scratch and attach. Um, if you guys have questions as you are working on these, of course, ask me. I hope that this video was helpful um, for you to be able to reference all of these things as you are working on your project. All right, so I've got, replacing that. All right. Now a little extra water to the lid because the lid is drier clay than what I have for my knob at the top of my box. All right. And so I've scratched a little bit more than is showing here. So I'm going to go ahead and use my tool to smooth that out. All right, and then before this dries completely, I'm also going to do any smoothing here, like um, that cut was a little bit rough. 
I'm going to be gentle because my clay is getting pretty dry. Um, I don't want to let, add a lot of water to it. I might do just a little bit here. Uh, but I do not want to end up re-soaking it because I don't want this to crack. All right, and there we have it, Mr. ceramic box. All right, I hope this goes well for you. Holler at me if you need me.